I love terrible Japanese films. It's true. I don't want the newest hits, the award winners, the media darlings. No, I want the bottom of the DVD bargain bin barrels. Those movies that have been sent straight to VHS, DVD, and streaming because they just wouldn't be accepted in a theater that had any self-respect. Uh, violence, smut, overacting, and tasteless humor are the name of the game when it comes to these types of movies. Which brings us to today's review. Hana no Ona Sumo, a.k.a. Sumo Vixens, a 1996 film starring the alluring Kei Mizutani in all her birthday suit glory. I'm sure you're all familiar with the long-standing Japanese sport of sumo. Even if you've never watched a match, those rotund men wearing barely a stitch to their name certainly form an unforgettable image. So, it comes as no surprise that they've been used in tons of media over the years, from cartoons to games, comics, and movies. The female side of the sport is not so well known, however it did exist, but was more of an exhibition, going as far back as the Edo period, and seems to have ended sometime in the 50s. So, does a movie like Sumo Vixens help bring this type of history to the forefront? Or is it just pure titillation? Directed by Takao Nakano, who is a prolific director of Japanese pink films, Sumo Vixen starts off with small-time Yakuza crime boss Zenjiro Arakuma getting out of prison after serving his sentence, and right away we're introduced to some of the crude humor of this movie. He's greeted by his waiting underling, Tompachi, played by one of my favorite low-budget Japanese actors named Keisuke. His unmistakable smile shines bright in any movie I see him pop up in. He's like a grinning seal of quality. If he shows up in a film, you know you're in for a treat. So, the two broke Yakuza go off, trying to figure out what their next move will be now that Arakuma has a second chance at life. We're then introduced to an older woman by the name of Kimio, who's having flashbacks to her days as a pro-female sumo wrestler. Not only is her health starting to fail her, she's also in debt. And other Yakuza from the Dominion Agency are regularly harassing her, trying to take her land to make up for the payments she owes. They're also trying to get her niece, Ludiko, to work in the adult entertainment establishments known as Soaplands that they own. I'll leave it up to your imagination what those are, but let's just say they involve people covered in soap suds and not much else. Ludiko decides she needs to revive the female sumo league, both to get money to help her aunt and to keep the sports spirit alive. As luck would have it, it just so happens that Arakuma used to be a sumo player himself, and Ludiko comes to him for help, begging him to train her. Swayed by her beauty, Arakuma agrees. They eventually get other women to join, but according to Tompachi, not many women were willing to run around topless, which is understandable. So the pickings were slim. The new recruits include two prostitutes, one who is constantly huffing on bags of bread throughout the whole film, and I'm not convinced she isn't actually a real drug addict, and one who is played as some type of foreigner using strange Japanese and later pulling out Thai boxing moves, despite that the actress is clearly Japanese. The third is a woman who is constantly crying because of troubles with her drunken gambling husband, but she does her best so she can support their son. They begin their training under the guidance of Arakuma, running, battling, and so on in several montages, which is when you get many eyefuls of the topless sumo women, obviously the bread and butter of the film. This is of course helped when the real selling point of the film, popular pink film star Kei Mizutani, playing the leather-clad bad girl Akagi, joins the team. Her skills are well above the others, as well as her other talents. 
Mizutani was quite big in the 90s, with her breakout film Weather Woman getting her a lot of notoriety when it was released about a year before Sumo Vixens. And it's good that Akagi joined them, because they'll need all the help they can get. You see, the Yakuza of the Dominion Agency have also gotten their own team of female wrestlers, and put out a challenge that if Arakuma's team wins, all of Kimio's debt will be erased. But, if the Dominion team wins, Ruriko will have to come work at the Soaplands and first receive special training by the boss. There's some more character building, where aside from everyone training, we get things like Arakuma's deepening love for Ruriko, her mysterious relationship with her aunt Kimio, and a dark violent past between Akagi and the leader of the Dominion team the one-eyed Oryu. This all culminates in the final battle, a five-on-five -five tournament between both teams with everything on the line. The plot is pretty simple overall, but with the additional storylines, there are a few twists here and there to keep it interesting, but nothing that'll surprise you. It clocks in at just over 70 minutes, so it's surprising they fit in as much as they did without it feeling too cramped. Although who the main character is meant to be is a bit confusing. The movie starts and ends with Arakuma, but a lot of the focus is put on Ruriko and her situation. At least, that is until Akagi shows up. And then the film sort of forgets about Ruriko, even having her big match last just a few seconds in the final battle, and not much being made of the loss. While Akagi's lasts for several minutes, breaking out into a full-on brawl with everyone in the room. The acting is that special brand of over-the-top cartoonish that is the norm for most of these direct-to-video Japanese films, which you're either going to get a kick out of, or find it very bad. It sits right on the brink of almost being a home movie, but with just enough budget and experienced people involved to keep it from seeming too amateurish. Of course, it also makes up for that with ample amounts of skin to keep your attention, and let's be honest, that's the main draw for most people. The majority of the female actors, and even a couple of the male ones, spend most of the movie topless and don't hold back from shoving it all right up to the camera. During the battles especially, they often go the path of getting right up and close to the, uh, action during fights, zooming in on boobs and butts so the viewer is distracted by the lack of choreography. But this isn't really a negative, it's just the film knowing what the budget went to. There isn't too much music, but what is there suits it well. Having that traditional Japanese sound with lots of taiko drums, something that wouldn't seem out of place in a more serious sumo film. If you're a fan of silly Japanese pink films, I think it's fairly entertaining, and Kei Mizutani is probably a special draw for many, as she gained a cult following back in the day and does a decent enough job acting as the tough woman with a troubled past and no shame to bear it all. This film also got an English release on DVD, which is where the name Sumo Vixens came from. This release has Japanese audio with English subtitles, as well as an English dub version, previews of other Mizutani films, and some facts about actual sumo that might be of interest. So, if you're like me and enjoy trash Asian cinema from the 80s and 90s, I think you'll enjoy this one. And with its short run time, it goes by in a snap. But of course, it's not for the prudish, as it's full of nude buxom babes and comedy that would be considered um, inappropriate by some these days. So fair warning. Uh, it does touch on bits of sumo as well, but it also breaks a lot of sumo rules with how the matches play out, so don't go into it expecting to learn too much about the actual sport. Well, with that, I gotta get in out of the rain. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.